before installing or assembling your hydraulic system, be sure that you have all necessary items. You're going to need a hydraulic power unit, a hydraulic hose set made up of three separate hydraulic lines, your hydraulic pump end, a discharge hose, and a flotation device. Some tools will be necessary to complete the setup of your hydraulic unit. Two pipe wrenches, one adjustable wrench, one hammer, a wire brush, and a can of evaporative cleaner. You may also want to bring an extra five gallons of biodegradable hydraulic fluid in case you are charging new hydraulic lines for the first time. Shown here is the hydraulic pump in and the flotation device. Feel free to use chains, ropes, strap, or whatever necessary or available to secure the pump end to the flotation device. This is one of many ways that the pump can be mounted into the flotation device. Before connecting discharge hose to pump, be sure to check gasket for cracks and dry rotting. Also check seat and end of hose for debris or cracks. Insert gasket firmly into hose end and install hose onto pump. Lock cam lock fitting into position using cam arms. Tap with hammer if necessary to ensure arms are completely closed. Use attached safety pins to secure hose onto pump. If using a Thompson flotation device, use attached chain to secure hose to flotation device. Now we will begin to install the hydraulic hoses onto the power unit and the pump end. First, disconnect male and female ends of hydraulic hose and inspect interior of fittings for debris, dirt, or spoiled hydraulic fluid. Inside of male threaded fitting are two O-rings. Check for condition. Use wire brush if necessary to clean threads. Ensure on female end of hose that snap ring holding connector onto the hose is firmly in place not loose, damaged, or rusted. In the case that you do find debris inside the hydraulic fittings, use your can of evaporative cleaner or any solvent that will not leave a residue to clean old fluid out of fittings. Any debris in fittings or hydraulic lines may cause contamination of hydraulic fluid inside the power unit. After you've inspected your fittings, roll out hydraulic hose set, inspect hose set for damage, dry rotting, kinks, leaks, tears, damaged fittings or crimps at the fittings, and condition of o-rings. Check again for debris and fittings to ensure that you're not going to contaminate your hydraulic fluid after hoses are hooked to power unit. It is not necessary but is sometimes helpful to leave hose set banded together during installation. At this point you may begin installing the hydraulic hose set to the power unit. Each fitting and each hydraulic line is a different size so that they will not be confused with one another. Again, when connecting any hydraulic fittings, be sure to check for any debris, rust, damaged o-rings, or snap rings that may cause a failure or contamination in your hydraulic fluid. When installing hydraulic hoses, sometimes it is necessary 
to tap fittings with a hammer to ensure they are fully seated. The power unit is equipped with the female hydraulic fittings to couple to the male end on the hydraulic hose set. For the middle line or bypass line, it is necessary to use the pipe wrenches to fully tighten the line. It is the smallest size of the three. To connect the hydraulic pump head to the hose set, the same tools will be required as for connecting the hydraulic hose set to the power unit. It is imperative to ensure that all connections are fully tightened and recommended to use a hammer to tighten hydraulic fittings. All Thompson hydraulic equipment will come with plugs or caps on all hydraulic connections so that during storage the hydraulic fittings can be covered and safe from outside debris. Now that our hydraulic connections are complete, it is time to perform a final inspection before we begin. This is a site level gauge to give you a visual indication of how much fluid you have in your tank. Located just to the right is a hydraulic fluid level sensor, a safety device designed to control loss of fluid in case of a leak in the seals. Located on top of the hydraulic fluid reservoir is your return line filter. This filter is designed to trap any contaminated fluid and or debris and metal coming back from your hydraulic pump end. Ensure filter is clean before starting unit. Located on the side of the filter housing is a pressure gauge. This pressure gauge will tell you what your restriction is from the hydraulic filter. If at any time after the fluid has reached its operating temperature that this gauge reads over 25 PSI, it is imperative that you turn off the unit and change the filter. This fill port is used to add hydraulic fluid when necessary. It is also a cover for a suction screen filter, which we will show you later in this video. Before starting unit, ensure that all caps are stowed away in a secure area. Underneath the hydraulic reservoir is the main suction valve. Before turning on unit and pressurizing system, ensure this valve is open fully. If the valve is closed, you will have no hydraulic pressure when you close the needle valve. For servicing purposes, there is a secondary drain port located at the bottom of the hydraulic fluid reservoir with the gate valve and the plug. Now we'll move on to the engine. First, you have to check the fuel tank to be sure that there is enough fuel in the unit to perform the job that is required. Ensure that your rain cap on the exhaust is functional and will cover the exhaust pipe when the engine is not in operation.
check your coolant level and condition. Remove the radiator cap and look into the radiator. You can also check your fuel level by dabbing your finger into the radiator. Inspect air filter that is secure onto the intake manifold and that there is no debris or the filter is not dirty. Inspect inline fuel filters for debris and contamination as well as fuel lines for color and transparency. This will allow you to see if you have air bubbles in your fuel. And remember to always check the oil in an engine before you start it. Check battery terminals for tightness and corrosion. And ensure throttle functions properly. Action should be smooth and clean. To start the power unit and begin pumping, be sure to check all hydraulic connections with hammer and wrenches. Ensure needle valve is fully open, turned completely counterclockwise. The throttle is fully closed and the hydraulic supply valve on bottom of tank is open. Turn key to start position. Allow engine to start and run. Wait a few minutes for hydraulic fluid to reach operating temperature. While waiting for hydraulic fluid to warm, inspect engine and gauges for proper operation and readings. Engine temperature should be no more than 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Oil pressure 45 to 60 PSI. Alternators should charge between 13.5 and 14.8 volts. Check hour meter for operation, as well as tachometer. Hydraulic pressure gauge on top of pressure relief block should read no more than 2800 PSI during maximum operation. Return vent pressure gauge no more than 25 PSI and hydraulic temperature should be less than 200 degrees Fahrenheit. After inspection is complete, slowly close needle valve until knob stops turning. Watch pressure gauge and return vent pressure gauge for proper operation. To increase and decrease flow, use the throttle. Do not use needle valve to control hydraulic flow. To disengage hydraulic system, Slow engine to lowest RPM setting, 1300 RPMs. Turn needle valve counterclockwise until it stops. Allow system to run for a few seconds. Turn key to off position. Disassembly of the system is the same as installation, but in reverse. It may be necessary to use a hammer to loosen connections. Be sure to install all plugs and caps back onto hydraulic fittings to keep contamination and debris out of fittings while in storage. A small amount of hydraulic fluid may be lost during disconnection of hoses and fittings. Be sure to bring towels or absorbent cloths to pick up lost fluid. When storing hydraulic hoses, it is easiest to roll the set to the center from each end as opposed from one end all the way to the other. Now that the hoses are disconnected from the power unit, you can wind the second half of the hoses towards the center of the pile. Once the two ends of the hose meet, match up male and female ends of the hose to keep debris and contamination out of the hoses during storage. When